Hi guys, Asmo here and in this video I'm gonna share with you the strategy that allowed me to get this insane amount of loot with minimal investment. Before I share the strat, let me talk about what is responsible for most of the loot that you're gonna get in your maps. Because it's not the legions, it's not the abysses, it's not MFing, it's not divination cards. The most important thing that is gonna give you the most loot is the forest. The wisps are gonna scale your loot more than anything else. So that is the reason why we are juicing our maps. The, now, how do we scale the wisps? The main and most important thing is gonna be the amount of monsters that you have in your maps. So you wanna run maps and league mechanics that are going to to allow you to get as many monsters and especially as many rare monsters as you can because those are going to have the extra modifiers that can convert the loot and give you bigger stuff so how do we scale the amount of monsters the mainstream strategy right now is using things like enrage strong boxes but that sextant costs 150 chaos using beyond sextant which costs 300 chaos using abyss sextant which costs 70 chaos and then using a lot of wing winged scarabs which also are very very expensive people are also buying eight mod corrupted burial chamber map which is also very expensive so there is a lot of cost and the maps just start costing a lot a lot a lot of money so when you for example run a map and you get very very shitty forest you don't have a lot of wisps you cannot really abandon that map right because you're losing so much you, you feel compelled to run it but sometimes it actually is more efficient to just open a next map if you had like 1500 wisps you probably are just better off not running that map if you don't invest in it like a huge amount of currency like with my strategy and just run next map and just run the maps where you get like huge amount of wisps right or just even even with like a medium amount of wisps you want to make sure that your strategy is still consistent enough because you have enough of, enough of monsters to scale the wisps so that even if you don't get like a crazy amount of wisps you still have a good map and this strategy also accomplishes that so what do we do we are not running all of these expensive things but we are still getting the benefit from having most of these mechanics in our maps so the in terms of the sextants the sextants that i'm running are um, the legion sextant for extra legion we're running the alva for extra alvas because this is a huge amount of loot um, if you have alva missions you can run a ritual sextant instead right so the legion is 20 chaos the alva is currently 10 chaos ritual is also 10 chaos so you just replace one of one with the other if you have the missions we're running also harbinger which is also 10 chaos and then i'm also running the reflect because the reflect sextant the mirrored monster packs gives you um, as many rare monsters as the one that gives you just rare monsters for rare maps however it costs five chaos and you can still also like run reflect maps right so it's an additional benefit adds extra monsters to your map very very handy and you can run very very juicy maps with the uh, extra like corruptions and extra modifiers that have reflect on them whether it's elemental and physical uh, for my build it especially is uh, important so this is uh, what I'm running in terms of the sextants. For the map, I'm running Dunes. Dunes is perfect because we have a good divination card that is very, very consistent, which is the fortunate. Uh, then we have also very, very nice open layout, which allows us uh, to have great breaches, great legions, just great mechanics overall that uh, have are able to take a lot of space. So you're going to get more monsters that way as well. And then another thing is the boss is positioned in a way where you can very, very quickly rush to it and then have altars that are going to be spawning mostly with modifiers that can give you quantity, right? So you're going to get a lot of quantity. You're going to get a lot of currency duplication. The map that you're seeing in the background is uh, a lot of currency duplication, right? This is a map I run today on stream and I hit uh, some altars with currency duplication and I hit a good amount of wisps and I just ended up getting huge amount of loot, right? So this is something that can very, very easily happen if you get good altars. Another map like that is, for example, Jungle Valley. However, Jungle Valley doesn't have as many monsters, doesn't have as good of a layout. So I definitely prefer Dunes. It's just such a good map to run right now. In terms of the Scarabs, I am investing. I'm running basically a Legion Scarab, just any Legion Scarab I have, but like polished is good, uh, but you can run Rusted, you can run Gilded, you can run Winged, whatever you want. Um, about the flexibility of this strat, I'm also going to mention how you can run actually a lot of different things. Um, Harbinger, uh, Gilded Harbinger is like 11 Chaos, I think. Then we have a Rusted Breach, just for an extra Breach, for 2 Chaos. Um, and then the last one, you can run, uh, I run Reliquary, I run uh, Diff Scarabs, uh, I also run sometimes Abyss if I have a map with extra 2 projectiles. Uh, so this is basically about 50 Chaos per map in terms of the investment if we also add to it the beyond from map device the difference between getting beyond on a map device versus getting beyond on the sextant is that the sextant gives you also 25 percent pack size 
for the Beyond Monsters. But it ends up not being actually that big of a difference because you're already scaling pack size and that extra 25% is not going to be that much. And you're paying huge, huge, huge amount of money instead of just paying 5C per map, you're paying way more, right? Because four maps, you're paying, what, 20 KLs instead of paying 300 KLs, right? So it's 20 KLs to 300 KLs difference. Um, what this low investment strategy allows you to do is basically skip maps that have horrible amount of wisps, right? So you can just completely disregard the maps. Like if you just find a shitty forest and you have like a thousand wisps, you can just completely just, you can just quit the map and run the next one because you, it's not really gonna set you back because we're paying 50 chaos in terms of the investment, which is laughably, ridiculously small amount compared to the amount of like raw divines and insane amount of currency that we're pulling out of there. I'm just getting a ton of Waldo's puzzle boxes. I'm getting uh, a ton of uh, like void uh, born reliquary keys, a ton of different uniques, right? I got, for example, um, eyes of the great wolf with 20% quant, which sold for 30 divines today. There is just so much loot you're getting. You're getting raw divines, you're getting all kinds of loot. Um, and so this strategy basically works just like any other uh, juicing strategy, but it is way, way cheaper and way more efficient because we are avoiding the meta. Another good thing you can do with this strategy is it allows you for some flexibility, right? Because we're not bound to, for example, the boxes, right? Strong boxes, even though they're good and the principle of running boxes is really good, especially if you scale pack size and you scale um, general quantity, right? The, the amount of boxes is going to also scale, right? Because you're going to get the you get the quantity multiplier from the sextant. You get the, uh, more monsters for just having more boxes, right? And uh, pack size and also the atlas uh, is scaling that. So uh, the boxes are really good. However, they commit you to running two um, sextants, right? So you need to have two compasses reserved for that and then also map device and then also uh, scarab. And it's, it's very, very restricting and you're paying a lot of money for something that is not even that much better than just adding a bunch more monsters into your maps, right? It's definitely really good and it works better if you're running uh, in, like if you're running, for example, in maps that have a very, very expensive divination card, like, like Boreal Chambers, then it becomes a little bit better. But if you're not committing yourself to one strategy like that, then you can take advantage of the scarabs that you're dropping in your maps because if you're running this strategy you're gonna drop a lot of scarabs you're gonna have giant explosions of scarabs i had an explosion of scarabs that wouldn't fit on four screens it was literally like four screens wide because it reached like the limit how high and like up and down the, scar the scarabs the loot can go vertically so it went so it started going horizontally and went, went like four screens to the sides and it was absolutely insane amount of scarabs and you get like winged and gilded scarabs and so on so um for uh for in terms of the scarabs you can run divination scarabs you can run reliquary scarabs you can uh, run abyss scarabs uh, you can run um, also cartography scarabs right so you have a lot of different options as long as you're adding monsters to your maps uh, or scaling the amount of loot that you're getting by either getting like divination or reliquary scarab you're doing fine right so there is not really like a very hard requirement you can run ambush scarabs which are going to add more monsters to it it's going to give you more beyond uh, so this is going to be completely fine as well right so uh, in terms of the maps themselves uh, I'm running just basically dunes that I roll myself. How do you roll the maps? Number one, you get a bunch of dunes. Number two, you chisel them. Number three, you alk them. Number four, you rejects, right? So you check for modifiers that are bad for you. If there are maps that have bad modifiers for you that you don't want to run, let's say you don't want to run uh, reduced recovery of life because your character is just going to die to degen, right? So you, so you want to scour these maps, alk them again until you have all of your maps that that have only modifiers that you want to run so all of the maps are modifiers that you want to run after that what you do is you check for beyond and you check for two extra projectiles and you put these maps to the side beyond you're gonna run together so that you can skip beyond on the map device and you put something else on the map device right you can put ambush on a map device you can put expedition you can put blight uh you can put whatever you want right uh and you can also put like the special crafts if you have like corrupting tempest or whatever. So that's one thing you can do with the beyond maps. The pro extra projectile maps, what you want to do also is you literally will exalt them, right? You literally want to exalt these maps 
because you don't want to corrupt them and then potentially lose the good modifier, which is two extra projectiles or beyond, but you do want more modifiers so that you have higher quantity, higher rarity, higher pack size, right? So you definitely want to exalt them and just make sure that you're not adding any mods that break it. If you have mods that break it, you just annul. You're going to have a lot of exalts and a lot of uh, annuls. It's totally worth doing, right? It's absolutely worth doing if you have uh, these good maps and if you can run um, Abyss as well, right? Because the few Abyss scarabs that you're going to find, you can run with these extra projectile maps because you're not going to have that many of them, but it's going to be a portion of it, right? So now that you have these maps on the side, the rest of the maps, you're just going to look if they are like, let's say 100 quantity or like 90 plus quantity. If they have like 90 quant already without corrupting, you can put them to the side those are good to run if they are like below 90 percent quant then you can just corrupt them all and after you corrupted them all you put your rejects in the search bar again and make sure that uh, the maps that you cannot run you just throw them away just put them on aside and uh, sell it to someone and then the maps that you can run uh, rest of them some of them are going to be unidentified you can run them with unidentified sextant uh, some of them are going to be eight mode corrupted and they're going to be actually good for you to run some of them are also going to get beyond some of them are going to get projectiles so you sort them again and then you just run the good ones you run the projectile uh, with abyss scarabs you run the beyond with a different craft and a map device uh, and you run the most juicy ones with the best scarabs right so for example if you have some winged scarabs and you want to juice your map a little bit more because you dropped some winged legion scarab or like uh winged divination winged reliquary winged harbinger or whatever um, you can get the best and mostly juicy maps and then run those together um, you can also reroll your scarabs so if you use harvest uh, har with purple juice you can reroll scarabs into different types of scarabs i definitely recommend doing that with the some of the shitty ones right so like if you have like torment bestiary sulfide ultimatum scarabs if you have those you can just simply reroll them into the other ones and either sell them or run them in your maps and that's basically the rundown of the strategy but now let's look at the atlas which is also a very very important part of it so the atlas is uh, based on fab guns atlas where i think it was the alva focused atlas because we are using alva so there is a lot of uh, similarities to that atlas but with some changes so what are the main changes or rather what are we doing in general so first of all this is a wandering path right so we're not taking notables we're increasing the um, small passives so that we have this whole row of um, increased effect of modifiers on our maps which increases the modifiers on our maps and that in turn gives us more quantity rarity pack size uh, we're running beyond so we're getting all the relevant beyond nodes as well as endless tides so we don't have bosses because all we care about is as many monsters as we can right so you're gonna get a ton of uh, currencies you're gonna get like i have like 26 tainted fusings uh, nine mythic orbs like uh, tons of like hundreds of these uh, different uh, currencies that you're going to get a ton of right uh, because we are scaling so much uh, like we're scaling we're adding so many monsters to the map through so many different means that you're going to get a ton of beyond monsters so beyond is one of them uh, then we got a chance for delirium mirror so we're getting a bunch of chance for delirium mirror we're getting a quantity of items dropped in incursions and also incursions have increased pack size because we are running alva that's why we're also pathing through the incursion here a uh, quantity of items drop in incursions um, then we're also picking up chance for ritual al altars if you are going to run alva missions then you want to run ritual sextant and if you're going to run ritual sextant then you drop these and you put them into something like harbinger shard drop chance or something like that right or maybe extra breach chance because we are still not picking up two nodes that give me extra breach chance speaking of breach we're getting some extra breach chance for some extra breaches extra monsters as well as these nodes which gives you monster density right so we get like 10 percent monster density per node here for the breaches so you're just gonna get more monsters again um more monsters for this with the eldritch gaze right so we're running blue altars getting the pack size here to get as many altars as possible we're getting chance for legions to get additional legions as well in our maps plus these uh, legion nodes uh here for extra chance to have rewards um, and then we're running also harbinger of the quantity um, and a singular focus to sustain our map of choice and that is basically the atlas tree the strategy is very very fun the main difficulty from the strategy comes from the league mechanic right so depending on how many wisps you get that's going to determine how hard the map is going to be at my current investment this build is just 
unnecessarily expensive this league because MFing is very very expensive just by in general bow builds like tornado shot is very expensive in general and meta builds are very expensive in general this is all three <laughs> and so it's unnecessarily expensive and things like the massive thread of hope for example cost like 100 divines so this build is like 500 divines in total but it's like 80 divine weapon headhunter thread of hope and that's most of the cost already um, so this build other than that doesn't have anything really crazy and it can handle i would say like 8k wisps is all right 10k i can clear them up but not abyss i had like an abyss map where i had like crazy shit happening where i had like multiple uh, like abyss like abyss abyss spire that was spitting out infinite monsters while at the same time there was loot that i had to pick up there but the monsters like couldn't be killed in time because they were way too tanky so it was like infinitely spawning them so there was like one map that i happened to break i still pulled out like I don't know, maybe 10, 15 divines out of that map. Um, but that was one map that I that I bricked. Other than that, I'm doing like seven, eight, nine k wisps, no problem, right? It just takes a little bit slower uh, if you have like nine k wisps. Um, but uh, this build is not that powerful because I have MF, right? So this is the sacrifice that I'm uh, that I'm making basically. But tornado shot is excellent for the league mechanic because you can shoot in the darkness, right, and get the extra juice. So that's it. Hopefully uh, this is gonna be helpful if you wanna juice on a budget. I highly, highly recommend this strategy. Uh, you can basically scale the difficulty to your own build and do it however you like. There is a lot of flexibility in it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.